Welcome to the official YouTube channel for the Colin Coward Podcast. Go on, hit the subscribe button. There you go, right down there. If you wanna be among the first to hear my weekly takes, NFL, college football, more, right there. What do I, like Harbaugh getting a 2-0 and start. Listen, Dallas is, I thought it went in their favor. That was my take. I do think that Cleveland, I'm not expecting the same what we saw last year. I mean, obviously they're all in a Deshaun Watson. His cap hit has really kicked in. The roster's, I don't think, going to be as good just moving forward, obviously. And I, I'm not sure he's still a good player. Uh, but even if they take a huge step back, we all know week one is tough, right? And you could play the worst team in the league in week one. Everyone has the same hopes and dreams. They, they're Everyone's 0-0, especially at home. And Cleveland is a tough yeah. place to play. And the hype on that game with Brady calling it, that's a sneaky big game because then all of a sudden, like, I think most people think the Saints were really shitty last year. They did go 9-8 and eight and their offense was mainly putrid. Well, they add Kubiak's kid who comes from Shanahan. I think the Saints are going to be better. And then you got Baltimore. It's just a tough little early stretch for a team that, I don't want to say they're walking on eggshells, but the McCarthy story, the DAC, they don't extend them. It could get weird, and it could get weird fast. I, I just got that Cleveland game circled. I, I think that is going to be very – I can see Cleveland winning that thing and Cleveland being a 6-7 win yeah. team. Yeah, you know, speaking of Cleveland and that division, I, I'm going to make an argument that the toughest schedule in the league I saw was the Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay, oh, it's really hard. so you start – you have better rosters than these teams, but they load them up at Atlanta, at Denver, at Indy, and Harbaugh. That's a rough start. I mean, it, again, I agree. You have better rosters than Atlanta, Denver, the Chargers, and Indy. Three of the four on the road, and you come out of that road streak with Dallas two weeks later, Aaron Rodgers. Like, that's rough. And did you see the last six quarterbacks Pittsburgh faces? Burrow, Deshaun Watson, Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, Mahomes, and Burrow. Like Mike Tomlin is going to be on a network broadcasting. And and by the way, I, I predict <laughs> he'll be great. I've talked to two network execs who would hire Mike Tomlin tomorrow. Are you shorting the Steelers this year? I am shorting them. I mean, did you have to put at the end of the year, the last three quarterbacks, Lamar, Mahomes, and Burrow in the last month, did, did you see the story, though, about Burrow's hand surgery, the percentage of it keeping? You know, most surgeries are 90 to 95 percent. That wrist hand surgery is like 70 to 75 percent success rate. And then it, it, no matter how well it goes, there's basically guaranteed inflammation. It's a little trickier than just your ACL or your broken leg. I, I do think that's something to keep a heavy eye on. Now, if he plays 17 games, I think we'd all acknowledge they're going to be one of the better teams in the NFL. But if that thing crops up, where it is. I mean, it would be a major problem. I, I thought the moment that they signed Russ before we even knew their schedule or who they were playing, one, they're not financially invested in them at all, right? They're paying them about a million dollars. Where even Denver last year, let's say hypothetically Sean Payton was out on them by October 1st. Financially, he had to see if he could make it work. And then the, the leash there is not going to be long. They have no draft capital invested. They have nothing invested and they do have another guy on a one-year contract who might not be good either, but at least is physically brings a lot more to the table. And we saw Arthur Smith, you know, win with Ryan Tannehill and Marks Mariota. So it's like, I just don't think this guy's getting a long leash. He's not going to be dinking and dunking, and they're one and three, and he no, gets to keep I, his I, job. So I looked it's at just the moment you move teams and they're not paying you anything, he better play well and they better have success or he will go I looked to at the Pittsburgh pine. today and I thought, I know Mike Tomlin's never had a losing season. That last six-game stretch, you'll have the second-best quarterback in all of those games. All of them. You know, one of the things I always look at is how many great quarterbacks do you face? The Jets don't face a lot of great quarterbacks. But again, they have seven standalone games, six night games, five short weeks, an international game. So the Jets' schedule is pretty easy. The NFL didn't do them any favors with nights, standalones, international. Yeah. <laughs> I look at Pittsburgh, and there's just no way. If the Jets have the easiest schedule in terms of facing elite quarterbacks, the, the Steelers got hosed. That last month and a half, they'll be underdogs potentially in all those games.
Well, I mean, if everyone's healthy, they easily could lose to the Ravens twice. I mean, the Bengals, the Eagles, the Chiefs. Uh, yeah, it's just that's really, really brutal. And let's face it, by that time, you're not 100%. You're going to have some injuries. Uh, they've kind of been at a similar spot the last several years. They they usually don't have some huge margin for error, right? They They don't start the season's nine and three that they've been hovering around 500 right till the bitter end these last couple of years. So I, I understand what they did. I would have done what they, uh, their, their moves at quarterback, getting rid of Kenny Pickett, getting rid of the group they had for Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. But just because those guys are much more famous, doesn't mean they're going to be much more effective. And I, I'm not a Deshaun Watson guy, but obviously if Lamar is healthy and Joe Burrow is healthy, the gap between Russell Wilson Justin Fields' quarterback room is a mile long. Hey, Philadelphia is one of the real blue bloods in terms of um, at Fox. Like, we like Philadelphia winning. Uh, Philadelphia yeah. winning, and Philadelphia usually does. So Philadelphia is really good for Fox. Boy, the NFL could have made that. Now, they open with Green Bay, but, you know, week two, Atlanta. Eight hours away. I mean, in, in international right, right. territory. So it's tough for both teams. <laughs> Lose a home game. week two. Atlanta, week three, New Orleans, week four, Tampa, week five, by into Cleveland, the Giants. Philadelphia is going to get off to a good start. That's a that's a pretty favorable schedule. And even at the end of the year, they end with the Giants. I mean, Giants could be the worst team in the league. And, you know, they also end, they've got Carolina in week 14. They've got Washington in week 16. Like, again, like if... if this is where the schedule matters. Like, I do think Nick Sirianni, this is a pressure year, right? Mike McCarthy, it's a pressure year. For sure. Philadelphia looks like they should at least start and finish the season on winning notes. I mean, come on. Week two, Atlanta. Week three, New Orleans. Week four, Tampa. You've got a much better roster than those teams. Well, they get a huge advantage from the simple fact of Washington starting a rookie quarterback. It Philly should beat them twice. And the, they have and the Giants. Are, the this, Giants. This is one when, of the weaker. They, I mean, Giants I know they teams. lost the last. Yeah, I mean, I the Giants. I think have a chance to be one of the worst teams in the league. And let's face it, I mean, the Cowboy Eagles games have been really good for the most part. But I think we all have to acknowledge sitting here today, the two rosters, the the, the gap widened o- over the off season. Do you agree with that between the Cowboys and the I, Eagles? Like, I, I, the the Eagles should be the heavy I, favorite. I, I have the Washington odds to win that division. Second. So you know what's really interesting. I don't think that's out of the realm. Honestly, both teams could be seven, eight, not you know seven, eight wins, right? Them and the Cowboys kind of things. range. Uh, two years ago and last year, I really felt like the AFC with they hit on so many young quarterbacks. The AFC, CBS, finally, even though they have smaller markets than the NFC and Fox, like I was finding myself watching a lot of AFC games, and then a lot of the quarterbacks got dinged up or hurt. If Caleb and Jaden Daniels hit. You know, Washington and Chicago, those are big TV markets. And they've been dormant for about 15 years. Is very quietly, and it's good for my employer, the NFC big markets, Chicago, Philadelphia, Washington, could be back. Because I I think Caleb and Jaden Daniels are going to be hits. I mean, you know this. I mean, Washington... 20 years ago, John, was arguably not only a blue blood, it was a third best TV draw in the sport. It was, I mean, the Joe Gibbs years, 90, 91, 92. Those those were like high profile, quirky, fun, crazy Super Bowl. And they just, due to bad ownership, went into the tank. That's why that RG3 year was such a big year. It felt bigger, you know, it felt longer than just a 12-month span. So it's interesting to me. If if Caleb and Jaden hit, it's not just good for the teams. It helps the NFC because the AFC in the last six, seven years, they just keep hitting on these guys. Herbert, Burrow, Lamar, Mahomes, Josh Allen, uh, Trevor Lawrence, C.J. Stroud. It changes the league. It changes your conference. So I think Jaden and Caleb are hits. They feel like... I mean, I don't know if Eberflus lasts, but I, I, I have Philadelphia, Washington, Dallas third, Giants fourth. I would probably agree with you sitting here right now, and I would probably put Dallas 
I, I mean, I think they could take a big step back. And when I say a big step back, I mean, they've been winning 12 games for three straight years. So all of a sudden you win eight. <laughs> That's That'd be a disaster. Adios McCarthy. But they're going to be dependent on a young offensive line, a lot of moving pieces. What you and I have talked about, and you've been hammering this forever, Dak, dependence on the running game. I mean, it, it, they're going back to the Ezekiel Elliott. Well, they don't have a choice, right? They, they need a running back. The NFC is pretty top heavy, right? I mean, the 49ers dominated for five years. Now the Lions are really good. The Packers have kind of consistently been good. The Eagles. So if the Cowboys step back, there's going to be an opening. I think Tampa's pretty good. I mean, I think Jason Light did a really good job of keeping that team together. Baker does not need to be the number one pick. He just has to play, I don't know, like a Derek Carr did with the Raiders or Cousins, you know, has done with Minnesota. He does not need to be Aaron Rodgers in his prime, which is ideal for him. And I I think Tampa feels pretty good. And just from a talent standpoint, high-end players, Tampa has a lot of them. Tampa has a lot of them. And I know everyone's talking about Atlanta. I I could see Tampa winning 10-plus games. 